The manhwa begins in a downtown city, a man with sand-colored hair is on the phone and he is reminded by someone who he calls president not to be late to meet a customer. The president reminds him that the customer will be at the hotel by 5.30 waiting with a yellow handkerchief. He agrees saying he is almost there and the president reminds him that this is his last chance that he will be kicked out if he doesn't satisfy the customer. His name is Sungmin and he is a rental boy whose job is to satisfy customers at a price. He sighs thinking that he hates it but he has no other choice because he became an orphan shortly after his birth and he ran away from the orphanage before he became an adult and there just seemed nothing else for him to do than to make money because of his smooth appearance and he was taken advantage of. It was never something he wanted to do but now he found it hard to leave because his boss had been beating him up if he got bad reviews from his customers. He checks his phone and realizes that he still has some minutes left, he looks around and wonders if his client hasn't arrived yet, he looks ahead and sights a well-dressed man seated under an umbrella in front of the restaurant with a yellow handkerchief in his suit pocket. He composes himself, gets into character and approaches the man, when he gets to him he compliments him on his choice of handkerchief and when the man turns to look at him he thinks that the man is handsome. He wonders why such a handsome man is renting a boy but he smiles at him and dismisses such thoughts. He asks the man if he wants to head up to the hotel immediately and the man stares at him in confusion, hotel? He asks and some man replies that the weather's pretty chilly and he's wearing thin clothes. The man stares at him, silently observing him and some man wonders why the man seems to be hesitating and isn't taking him to the hotel immediately. However, since he cannot afford to give up, he acts coy with the man and hands him his card saying he will take good care of him if he writes him good reviews. The man accepts the card and studies it, he then chuckles and gets up, towering above Sungman, he tells him to lead the way to the hotel and as they leave a man is seen behind them looking around frantically as if searching for something or someone. Behind them, the man checks his phone wondering if his guest hasn't arrived and sitting in his suit pocket is a yellow handkerchief. Sungman goes to take a shower in the hotel and he wonders when all this would end, when he gets back inside the room, the man is wearing a robe and drinking a glass of whiskey. The man reminds him that he said he will do everything and Sungman says he will try. He tries at first but then the man decides to take charge of the business and he drops him on the bed. Sungman feels that it is too difficult and he wants it to end as soon as possible but the man asks him if he is bored but he denies it saying the man's lecture is very interesting even though all his previous lectures were very boring and he just hoped for them to finish on time. He then encourages the man and tells him to go on because he doesn't want the man to leave a bad review but the man realizes that he is faking his interest in the subject and he stops telling him there's no fun if he is faking it. He cusses the man in his mind but he tells him to try harder, the man agrees and this time he doesn't quit even when Sungman pleads with him that he's had enough and he wants to take a break to eat before they continue. The man agrees and goes to the bathroom to wash up but before he returns, Sungman hightails it out of there and when the man comes back into the empty room, he feels angry that Sungman left without him. Just then he hears a knock on the door and he goes to open the door for room service, the man tells the staff to leave the food tray inside but as the man turns his back, the staff pull out a knife from underneath the food tray and he attacks the man with it. The scene changes to a man yelling at a group of men for their carelessness, it turns out the man Sungman took lectures with belonged to a criminal organization and the staff who had attacked him was from a rival organization. The man says enough and as he stares at his bandaged hands he thinks that if he hadn't reacted quickly it could have been a huge problem, he berates himself for being careless and easily swayed, he gets angry as he realizes that Sungman approached him intentionally and then he orders his men to find him. The scene changes to Sungman who is getting yelled at and almost beat up by his boss for failing to satisfy the customer, it turns out Sungman had taken the wrong man to the lecture room and the man who had been standing behind them as they left was the real client. The boss is about to hit him when someone helps him and informs the boss that someone booked him for the entire day, the boss softens towards him because of that but threatens to finish him off if he makes another mistake today and he leaves. After the boss leaves, Sungman wonders who booked him for the day and his friend informs him that it's a rich man who said he'd given him his business card and to wait for him outside. As Sungman makes his way outside, he tries to recollect which rich man he gave his business card to. 
When he gets outside, a black van pulls up in front of him and a muscular guy gets out and gestures for him to get in. When he gets in, he meets the man from the previous night and though he feels upset that he will have to spend the whole day with the psycho from the previous night, he smiles at him and tells him that he missed him hoping the man could become his regular client and his boss wouldn't have to bother him again. The man asks him why he left the previous night then Sungmin tells him the truth about mistaking him for his client. The man doesn't seem to believe him but he lets it go and offers Sungmin a drink. Sungmin tries to decline saying he can't handle alcohol well but the man insists and so he takes the glass and empties it down his throat. The man smiles at him saying he is really obedient and would do anything he asked of him. Sungmin then begins to feel dizzy and as he passes out, he realizes that he'd been drugged. Some time later, water is splashed on Sungmin and he opens his eyes to find himself surrounded by several rough-looking men in an empty warehouse, his hands are tied behind him and as he looks around he gasps in shock as he notices the man standing among them. The man leans down, grabs his hair harshly and asks him what organization sent him telling him that he will not kill him if he cooperates. Sungmin just stares at him in total shock and confusion and he wonders what the hell is going on. He finally speaks telling the man that he has no idea of what he's talking about but the man angrily strikes him across the face telling him that his answer is wrong. The man then walks away to pick up a long knife and walks back to him showing him the knife and telling him that it was the knife the hotel staff had attacked him with after he left him alone in the room, he tells him that he killed the man because he refused to tell him who sent him. He then tells Summon that he was the one who persuaded him to go to the hotel for no reason. Summon understands now how it would seem but he immediately pleads his innocence telling the man that he is nothing but a rental boy who mistook him for a customer because of the similar colored handkerchief. He trembles in fear as he begs the man to believe him. The man stares at him for a second and finds that there is no deceit in his eyes. He then orders all the men to go outside and investigate the truth of the matter. He then grabs Summon and tells him that he cannot leave until his men find proof of his innocence and until then he wants to give him some lectures. As the lecture commences, it is obvious that the man still doubts Summon and he takes his anger out on him, even calling him a bastard and saying his face makes him sick. He then shoves him on a bed and though he is mean to him, Summon had no choice but to endure even though he's hurt, the man tells him that he can keep him there for all his life if he doesn't find proof of his innocence and if he acts right with him he might just let him keep all of his fingers and toes even if he's the culprit. Sungmin then begins to try his best and even begins to enjoy the lecture they are having but he soon starts to feel very tired. Just when he thinks he's going to die of exhaustion, someone knocks at the door interrupting them, the man frowns but he leaves to answer the person telling Sungmin to stay put and that he'll be back. As soon as he leaves, Sungmin thinks of escaping and calling the police with his phone. When he finds his phone, a call comes in from his friend telling him that their boss was taken away by the criminal organization. Sungmin is about to ask for help when the man appears behind him and asks him what he is doing. The man grabs his hand yelling at him for not staying out and he tosses his phone away. The man then promises not to end the lecture until Sungmin is completely exhausted since he still had energy in him to try and call the police. After a few hours, the man receives a phone call confirming Sungmin's story. He tells Sungmin that he was really telling the truth and that makes Sungmin happy. He brightens up and he begins to prepare to go back to his house. Before he can leave though, the man stops him saying he initially wanted to let him go but he has changed his mind. Summon panics telling the man to let him go since he did nothing wrong, the man smiles saying he knows but it has been a while since he met someone so interesting, he hugs Summon from behind and tells him that since he likes him he should keep him for the time being till he gets tired of him and so to Summon's horror he's stuck with the man for the foreseeable future. The End